Hi, my name is Nicole. Welcome to my channel, Travel to Money. In this video, I'm going to talk about what you need to know about car insurance before you take off for long-term travel. I'll go over the biggest mistakes I've made, how you can get free basic coverage when renting cars internationally, and I'll also tell you about a car rental horror story I had in Greece. Seriously, one of the most traumatic experiences of my travel. If you are new here, I have created this channel to help you learn about how to travel, adventure, and have fun on the road to financial independence. I have traveled the world, paid off a house in Spain, and I've made big moves toward financial independence. I believe that the road to financial freedom can and should be fun. I hope that you'll subscribe and join me on this journey, no matter where you are starting from. Back in 2019, I set off for my second world travel adventure. Because I was leaving for several months and somewhat indefinitely, one of the ways that I reduced my expenses was by selling my car and canceling my car insurance. I canceled my car insurance because in my mind, that made sense. I no longer have a car, so clearly I don't need car insurance. I had been with Progressive Car Insurance for probably 20 years. Upon my return to the States, I purchased another vehicle. My first thought was to call Progressive. They had always been a great insurance provider for me. Their customer service was good. I had multiple discounts when I used them previously. Unfortunately, when I called to reinstate car insurance, my call with them didn't go so well. Even though I didn't own a car for a period of time and had been traveling the world and not even in the country, they consider that a gap in insurance. I was like, well, I didn't need insurance. I didn't have a car. They didn't care. And it turns out that all auto insurance companies don't care. That gap in insurance was going to cost me now. When I was insured with Progressive previously, I was driving a car that I had a car payment on and it was a 2012 luxury level vehicle. My insurance cost me around 80 something dollars per month. Now that I was returning, I had paid for an older 2003 vehicle in cash. So I owned the vehicle outright. To have the same level of car insurance that I had previously, it was now going to cost me $150 per month. I was furious. I couldn't believe I had been a 20 year customer of Progressive and I'm an excellent driver and was going to be paying more than I had ever paid for car insurance in my life for an old vehicle. I then called USAA. You've probably heard of them before, but USAA is a bank and insurance provider for military families. If you are a direct relation to someone in the military, you can get an account with them. I had used their car insurance when I was a teenager. I was hoping for better luck with them, but as it turns out, this gap in car insurance thing is not just with Progressive. I don't know who makes these ridiculous rules that make no sense at all, but what can I say? I've never been a fan of any insurance industry. As it turns out, you are expected to keep some sort of liability insurance. This is generally referred to as a non-owner insurance. Unfortunately, you can't get quotes for this online, but will need to call your insurance provider. Alternatively, if you have a residence and have other family or friends that live there, you may be able to be added to their regular policy. It could be a cheaper option. Then you could just pay them the difference rather than having to have your own policy. I really wish Progressive had told me about this when I called to cancel. It would have been cheaper for me to pay for liability insurance or to be added to my family insurance for those months than having to pay for the huge rate differences for a really long time. My insurance has slowly gone back down to more of a normal rate. The bummer for Progressive is that they lost my business. Okay, now that we know what you need to consider for coverage at home, even while you're traveling, now let's talk about what you need for driving overseas. I have driven cars in Spain, Portugal, Montenegro, Croatia, Indonesia, and Egypt. I have never once paid for insurance, but this is what you should know about me. I'm not a person that constantly lives in fear of the worst. 
I'm sure there are horror stories out there, but I take what I believe are calculated risks. By not purchasing coverage, I have saved thousands of dollars. The worst that has ever happened to me was that someone broke into a window and stole my bag in Spain. The car rental company charged me 300 euro for the repair. So who cares if I had to pay $300? I have still saved thousands of dollars. So let's talk about the different ways that you can make sure your basics are covered. I usually book my car rentals through Skyscanner when I'm traveling abroad. I look at the cheapest options and then I select a company that has good ratings. Usually Skyscanner will then send me to another third party site for the booking. It will be something like booking.com or rentalcars.com. Generally, when I book through a third party site, they will include something called collision damage waiver. You should look for it and make sure it is included in the booking. This covers you for physical damage to the rental vehicle, theft, and reasonable and customary towing and loss of use charges. So at least your basics are covered. What this doesn't include is coverage for injury. For me, the healthcare co-op I'm a part of covers me while traveling internationally. And in general, I feel much more confident going to a hospital somewhere in Europe. I know I'm not going to be overcharged and medical bills after something like an accident are sure to be far less than anything you could imagine in the US. The US medical system is one of the biggest greed scams in the world, in my opinion. You don't have to worry about that when traveling in Europe. As a matter of fact, if I was in need of major medical care and happened to be in a country where the medical care was questionable, I would have them fly me to Europe, not the US. Sorry for my rant. I've had to receive medical care in France and in Portugal, and it makes me never want to go to a doctor or hospital in the US again. Okay. So let's get back to the rental car coverage. Now, you might be thinking that your US car insurance will provide coverage for your car rentals. You can check with your insurance provider, but generally that only works when renting inside of the US or one of its territories like the US Virgin Islands or Puerto Rico. Now, if the third party booking company doesn't provide the collision damage waiver, you can often still have this provided for free if you book your car rental company with a credit card company who provides that same coverage as a benefit. When I book a car rental with my USAA credit card, they provide the collision damage waiver for 30 days worldwide. You can check with your credit card company or Google different credit cards that you can apply for that have this benefit. Now, I am also the person that has rented cars from people in both Bali and once on an island in Greece. In places like Indonesia, if you are in an accident, you can end up just negotiating with the other person. I'm not saying that I recommend going this route, but I guess it's just my risk taking personality. Okay, so out of all of my driving experiences around the world, one stands out as the worst experience ever. When my best friend and I traveled to the island of Rhodes in Greece, this time I booked a car through a rental company that I found on Skyscanner. When we went to pick up the car, the manager behind the counter kept saying that I should get the added insurance coverage, almost with a tone that implied that we would regret it if we didn't. When we went out to get the car, it literally had at least a hundred scrapes and dents all over it. I have never been given a rental car in worse shape than this one. We would always walk around a rental car and take a video just so that we would have proof of what it looked like when we picked it up. So you can bet that we did that when we saw the state of this car. Not only was it beat up, when we would drive it up a hill, it would go so slow. I would joke that I felt like I needed to run it with my feet like Fred Flintstone. Anyway, at the end of our three week rental, we returned the car just an hour before we needed to be at the airport. As soon as we walked in, they sent a guy out to inspect the car. Unlike any normal inspection, when they just briefly look around and take the odometer reading, this guy was looking at every little scrape. 
Immediately, I knew that we were about to be scammed and I could feel my blood pressure rising. Because I knew what was happening, I began to cause a bit of a scene. The agent that was helping us at the counter told me that we were responsible for four different dents or scrapes on the car. My friend Barb immediately pulled up the video that we had taken when we first picked up the car. One of the dents that they were blaming us for was very obviously in the video from before, and Barb took a screenshot of it. I showed it to the guy, and instead of saying something like, oh, I'm sorry, that's our mistake, he just looks at me and says, we don't accept videos. I started to raise my voice. He and I went back and forth, and I'm pretty sure I might have used a few expletives as my voice got louder and louder. There was a couple standing at the counter to my left, there to pick up their rental car. I very loudly turned to them and told them not to rent from this place because they were scammers and liars. I was causing quite a scene, and the manager came out from the back. This was the same guy that had previously been insisting that we get the car insurance coverage. Now, I realized why. Because they never fix the problems on the car, and then they claim the damage with the insurance companies over and over again, but never actually get the vehicles repaired. Complete scam. I began to argue with him, and when he also said something ignorant like, we don't accept videos, I said, fine. I pulled out my phone and said, I'm going to record you because what you're doing cannot be legal. I was shaking and angry. Pulling out my phone and beginning to record him infuriated him. He ran around the counter and started yelling at me. Then he slammed his hand a few times on the glass door and pointed to a sign that said no one could video record. I wonder why. Then he turned around and grabbed my phone out of my hand, yelling at me to delete the video. One thing about me is that I don't care if you're a giant. I'm not going to be treated like that. Something inside of me feels like I can win any physical battle. I don't know why it's not smart. Anyway, so I reach to grab my phone back from him and he slaps my hand away. I began yelling, did you just hit me? Did you just hit me? Meanwhile, male employees and the couple standing at the counter are just watching. Gotta love a bunch of bystanders who are useless. I told him I would delete the video as I was feeling like things were starting to get out of hand, trying to keep a handle of our time to be at the airport and also trying not to go to jail in Greece. He handed me the phone back and kept yelling to delete the video. I was shaking and trying to figure out how to actually delete it. He yelled again, delete it. And I yelled back, I'm trying to. He said, okay, okay. So I deleted the video. They made my friend Barb go outside, saying that she couldn't be in there because she wasn't on the contract. It was so ridiculous. He was trying to say that the dents that they were claiming were ours were not the same ones that we were pointing out. I had them pull up one of them, and then I showed him the screenshot. When he finally realized that we had pretty solid proof, he just picked up our contract, looked at me, and tore the contract up, acknowledging defeat. He then said we wouldn't be charged for any damage and that he only wanted me to go online to some website and leave a good review. As if. Anyway, he hugged me, of all things, and then we were on our way. Now, you probably know, like I did, that a deleted video goes into the trash of your phone storage and is held there for 30 days. Well, as we were taking off on our plane, I pulled up my trash and restored that file. Here's just a bit of when he grabbed my phone for your viewing pleasure. Delete. I never did anything with the video and I never wrote any sort of review. The driver that took us to the airport apologized for his boss's behavior and just said, he's crazy. Well, so am I. <laughs> If you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to join me where travel and adventure build financial freedom. I can't wait to see where your dreams will take you.